here. Teleconductor ionic solution inactive. Yes, the last three now get a little bit tricky. And back to here. And I can write here. Gases. So you've still got your y-axis, you've got the x-axis. Uh, current is on the y-axis, voltage is on the x-axis. And in this case, you've got three different scenarios. You've got a normal slope like that, then it starts to plateau over here, and then it starts to go up again at the end, like that. So there's three different things going on. And I explain it as follows. If you've got any gas inside in the tube, is that a plastic tube, Karina? That, or is that glass? A bottle? No, plastic. Throw it up here. Thank you. You've got gas inside here, you're applying a voltage. So positive at one end, negative at the other end. If everything here is completely neutral, will this respond to a potential difference? No. no. Yeah, generally, it won't. What actually happens is normally inside in the gas, even in the air, you don't have everything particularly, everything exactly neutral. You've got little ions floating around. So as we speak right now, there's ions of oxygen, ions of helium, ions of everything else. Basically, they have atoms which have lost electrons. The, one of the reasons they've lost electrons is because you've got cosmic rays coming in from outside, uh, basically from outside, even outside our solar system. Right now, you've got high frequency rays coming in, hitting off molecules in the air, hitting off molecules in us, and causing the different atoms to be ionized. What's the main source we've got of ionizing radiation coming from underneath, coming up? Radon, radon gas. So every time a radon gas molecule breaks down, it gives off alpha, beta, or gamma radiation. If one of them zips into a normal oxygen molecule, minding its own business, it ionizes the oxygen molecule. It zips into it, a little electron goes flying off, and you've got an ionized molecule going the other way. So in any gas, normally, you will have various different molecules roaming around, and a certain percentage of them will be ionized. And now if you apply your potential difference, the negative molecules are going to go where? Or if they have lost electrons, they'll be positive. So the positive molecules will go the cathode. to the cathode, to the negative end, and the electrons, which have been zipped off by themselves, are going to be attracted to the positive. And as you make it more positive, you're going to get more and more electrons. So this is a normal stage of what would normally happen, just like Ohm's law. As you increase the voltage, you get more and more of those neutral atoms being attracted, or more and more, sorry, of the charged atoms being attracted to one side or the other. Eventually, inside here, if you put this up to a maximum, and the maximum voltage will depend on, I don't know, it'll depend on molecules that are inside there, but eventually, every time one is produced, it'll get sucked over, if you've got a high enough voltage here. So if they're getting produced at a fairly constant rate by uh, gamma, gamma radiation hitting off of it, then every time they're produced, they get sucked over, so you're getting a constant current, even if you increase the voltage. So if I have a voltage at 100 volts, every charged ion that's produced gets sucked over here. If they're produced at a constant rate, well then you're going to get a constant current over here. And increasing the voltage above 100 volts isn't going to change things anymore because you're still getting everything that was produced getting sucked over. So that's why you've got this level part of the system. Okay? Increasing the voltage above that maximum doesn't attract anything more because as it stands, you're already attracting the maximum amount that can't come over. Okay? However, if you increase it above, let's say, 200 volts, and again, I'm guessing I have no idea what the maximum voltage is here, what actually happens? And we have the phrase here, avalanche effect. Where did we come across avalanche effect before? So that's the Geiger molecule. What happens in the Geiger molecule? They start ionizing and those The molecules which are getting sucked over here are now going so quickly, and one of the things that will happen if I make that 200 volts instead of 100 volts, what yeah, will happen to the speed of the electrons? On the way, Why do they ionize more on their way? Well, what's different from 200 volts to 100 volts? You have still have the same amount. They're going much faster. They're going much faster. Their velocity is increasing. They're getting sucked over much more. So if it's 200 volts, they're going at a very high speed. Now if they hit off atoms or molecules in their way, they ionize those guys. So now you've got more guys which are ionized, and they're going to get sucked over. So you're getting this constant buildup and buildup of charged molecules, and that's where the avalanche effect comes in. So you get a very high production of charged particles. Okay? As I said, I can't imagine you having to explain all of that in an exam, but certainly you've got to know the shape, and you've got to know what's being attracted here, well the positive ions, the guys that have not lost electrons are now positive, they're getting sucked one way, the electrons are getting sucked the other way. So they're charge carriers, positive ions, and electrons. Okay, two to go. The last one you've seen is semiconductor, so that's fairly straightforward, we'll go over that quickly, but the one in here is a vacuum. 
you've got to know what the shape for a vacuum is. So once again, you've got I and V, <coughs> and you've got, you know, I don't think this is, is this linear in your notes? No. Is it a curve? No, no it goes up and then it goes. So just something like that, but it's, that part there, if it is linear, it doesn't make too much difference, I don't think, and then it goes straight across like that. So once again, you've got to explain what's happening here. Why do you have this shape, and then why does it go straight across? In this case, I want to be out the water, but you've got a vacuum inside here. So there's no particles of any description. Now, what you need to kickstart this process, and you're back to your chapter on the electron, to kickstart this process, you basically need something to be heated up. So it's as if I heat up this thing. It's like a catalyst. Sorry? If there's nothing in it, how can you heat it? It's just the end. It's like if there's a metal end here, a metal cap. You heat up the metal cap. What happens when you heat up a metal cap? Thermionic emission, the electrons leave. So if that end is negative and I heat it up and make this end positive, the electrons that are produced are going to get attracted over here. In fact, if you just initially just have negative end at this end, can you empty this out? Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, it's hot water. Oh. Yeah. The particles going on. No, I can hold it like this. If I empty, mm -hmm. if, I empty if I make this end a bit hot, the electrons are going to be emitted, but they're going to be emitted in all different directions, right? Because I haven't applied a voltage, I've just heated it up. So I heat up this end, electrons go in all different directions. In order to suck the electrons over here, what do I need to do? Make this in potential difference, make this a bit positive. If I only make this two volts, then it'll attract the electrons that were going out in that general direction, but it might be enough to attract the electrons that were flying off this way. So as I make this more and more positive, I attract more and more electrons to this direction. So as I make the potential more and more positive, I attract more and more electrons. So between here and here, what happens is that any electrons, the more, the more positive I make it, the more electrons that are coming over here. And let's say I get up to, I make up the number again, 100 volts. Once I get to 100 volts, any number of electrons that are being sprayed off are now being sucked over here. So if we're bringing up to 200 volts, what's going to happen? Not you're not going to get any more. As it is, you're attracting everything else over here. Why do you get no avalanche effect in this case? Because there's nothing else here. It's a vacuum. So once you go above that necessary point, you attract all the electrons which are being emitted over here. Beyond that, no more are going to come over because there are no more available and there's nothing for them to bang into because you've got a vacuum inside here. Okay? And hence, the only charge carriers in this case are electrons. Okay, so far? Last one to go is the semiconductors, and in this case, you've got the positive poles and negative electrons, but we won't go through the detail because we've done before. <coughs> I, V, if it's forward biased, at the very least, what does my graph look like? Voltage. Voltage is fairly low, and then it reaches. What does it reach? What do you call it? And, it's that, and what is that point there called? The junction voltage. Junction voltage. So remember again, you had that you had a p-type and you had an n-type, and I, I really don't want to go through all this in detail. P-type and n-type. What happens when you put the two together? Depletion layer. Depletion layer forms here, and to overcome the depletion layer, you've got to supply a certain amount. There's got to be a certain amount of potential difference. What's here. that voltage called? The, the the that is what's the junction voltage. The junction voltage. Yeah, you've got a junction here to, to make electrons overcome the junction voltage. Mm -hmm. Go right through the junction, keep the junction voltage. Jen, you were saying what is that junction voltage generally? Oh, About 0.6 volts. 0.6 volts for one material, it might be 1.2 for another material, depending on the material. So once it goes through that material, it says if that depletion layer is broken down completely, it no longer exists. So now you have no resistance, so the current starts to increase dramatically like that. So your charge carriers in this case. Positive holes, negative electrons. Okay?